Uh, good afternoon. This is Guillermo Sabatier, your host for today's show on Perspectives on Energy. Uh, today we'll be discussing uh, some of the NERC exam questions. We'll go, we're going to go over through them and explain what the answers are. So looking forward to uh, showing all of these in a few minutes. Uh, welcome back. And again, this, I'm Guillermo Sabatier, Director of International Services for HSI, Health and Safety Institute, where we teach industrial skills uh, training. And one of our particular, um, I guess, products that we really focus on is training for the electric utility industry. And in particular is helping uh, new system operators or candidates to be system operators prepare for the NERC exam. And uh, in most cases, that's usually a, a very tough exam that has a, like a low 60s, 63% pass rate. Uh, not a cheap exam either. So usually around, I think it's $100 now. And it's definitely something that's challenging for most folks. Um, at the same time, I've seen a lot of, um, usually when you're hiring from within the industry, it's a little bit easier for them to have that that uh, prerequisite based knowledge when it comes to learning other concepts. But in a lot of cases now, we're beginning to see a lot of hires coming in from outside the industry. Usually some related industries, whether it's like petrochemical or industrial or other parts of the utility industry, but not quite the same typical career path we've seen in the past. So again, so today, hopefully we'll talk about balancing topics. We'll go over about maybe 10, 15 questions, whatever we have time for. Uh, and this is really like a sneak peek of the larger program that we have available at HSI, which is a typical NERC test, NERC exam prep uh, program that's either online or there's a uh, three, a four day instructor led course that you normally take once you've completed your online training modules, right? So uh, in this case, right, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, balancing section of it, where it has a lot of balancing and the interchange uh, standards that involves uh, the NERC exam. There's a few others as well, right? There's like emergency operations, there's uh, uh, and at least two others, and we'll cover those in a, in a couple of later episodes just to give everybody a little bit of a taste. But here, I like to kind of talk about some of the uh, typical, the worst offenders when it comes to, for some folks having issues. And uh, we usually have these on our presentations whenever we give our four-day instructor course. So uh, usually if you do a search and you're looking for help with NERC test questions, I really hope you come across this. But I definitely encourage you to take advantage of our um, online training program. Uh, usually it's it's it can take several weeks, but it's the success rate for that is about somewhere in the 80s, close to the 90s when it comes to people that actually take the take the training, they learn the concepts, don't memorize the questions or the answers, and they uh, they do pretty well that first time around. And of course, uh, when when you couple that with the four day instructor training, that you end up with um, an, an even better chance of succeeding. So again, um, I think the I think they're going to flash the website there in a little bit. It's hsi.com. I think it's industrial skills training. And if not, you also see it on the show information, right? And there it is right there. Thank you, Ash. So in, in there, you'll see it, but it's also on the show info as part of the uh, related links. Again, I really encourage you to take a look at that because uh, there's a lot more there that's available for this training as well. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, tackle the first one. I mean, I think we have uh, some questions here on, uh, on balancing. Question one here. Okay. So um, here we have the question just broken down, right? So the question here is a balancing authority has a net interchange scheduled of 150 megawatts and a frequency bias of minus 100 megawatts for every tenth of a hertz, right? Its net interchange actual is 190. So we're already off schedule, right? Keep that in mind. And the actual interconnection frequency is 59.95. So we're quite a bit slow. So there's something going on, right, out there in the system. So the question here is calculate the balancing authority's ACE. Well, uh, given here already is uh, the ACE equation, right, which is at the very top is ACE is equal to the net interchange actual minus a net interchange schedule minus 10 times the frequency bias times frequency actual minus frequency schedule, right? So in this case, it's a straightforward uh, plug-in numbers, you know, and then you'll see how you get the 190 minus the 150. So 190 is the actual uh, megawatts, meaning 190 megawatts going out of your system. That's the uh, sign convention, right, Kirchhoff's law. So positive is going out, negative is coming in. 
and then minus another positive 150, right? So you're supposed to be sending out 150 megawatts, but instead you're sending out 190. So you're sending out more than you're scheduled to be sending out. So you're already off right there. Uh, let's look at the frequency now, right? So uh, the frequency actual is 59.95. So you're really slowing things down in that regard, right? And, but, and your schedule should be 60 hertz. So you're already seeing a negative 0 0.5 hertz as far as frequency. Now, doing some of that calculation with the bias times the 10, you end up with 1,000, as you see calculated below. And then uh, the resultant interchange is 190 minus 150. That's 40. Um, keep an eye on the signs. It's very important to work. Make sure you're consistent with the signs. You end up with a 40 plus a negative 50, because, of course, 1,000 times negative 0.05 gives you a 50. It's a negative number, so minus 50. So at the end, you end up with an ace of negative 10. What this means in this case is that your system is actually, uh, since you have a negative ACE, in this case, your area, area control error, you're going to be trying to ramp up your generators ever so slightly so they can support the, the uh, frequency going out. Now, clearly something terrible happened out there, right? Because if you have a, 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 a bias of, I'm not, I don't think to remember here, you have a bias of a negative 100 megawatts for every tenth of a hertz, right? And in this case, you notice that the frequency is 59.95, which is maybe about half of that. So you could imagine somebody out there lost quite a bit of generation, right? And uh, so much so that that you're, you're you're having to react with like 50 megawatts of of uh, frequency bias to be able to support that. And at the same time, you're pushing out for quite a bit of megawatts as well. So that's that all adds up in this case, right? So some of the things you got to consider whenever you you ask these questions. Make sure you read the question carefully. Uh, here, it's a very simple, straightforward plug-in and calculate. In a lot of cases, right, it's, it's, uh, they're not letting you use a calculator anyway in the exam. So definitely a challenge, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you have some arithmetical issues, right, with, with making calculations. But here, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's not that difficult to consider. And then again, they usually give you numbers that are factors of 10, right, or pretty easy to subtract than add. So if the math gets too complicated, there's a good chance you're doing something wrong. That's another thing to consider in most of these uh, nerd exam questions. So again, this this came out of somebody's nerd exam, so they shared that with us as well. All right, Ash, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this other question we have, what is the balancing authority's ACE value with the following variables? So again, you're plugging it into the equation like we did last time, right? So same thing we did before. So you're looking at the, one thing to consider, right? It's a net interchange actual, and it's then an energy schedule. Once again, you're over generating, right? You're you're pushing a lot more power out than you're supposed to, right? But the frequency at the same time is a little bit slower, right? Than it needs to be. So once again, right, there's something happening outside your system. So uh, that frequency has slowed down considerably. So in this case, if you slow down, if you're actually slowing down outside of your system, and then you're you're supporting that frequency with your own generation using your frequency bias, right? You're going to be pushing out about 95 megawatts. So in this case, your your ACE here is 95 megawatts. So what's gonna happen, uh, and that's of course, you plug in all those variables and you calculate ACE. What's happening here, of course, is that now you're over generating altogether by 95 megawatts. So what would the generators do with an ACE that's positive 95? Well, in this case, Positive 95 means you're going to start pulsing down your generators. And once you begin to pulse down, that net interchange actual will come down quite a bit. And as you can see, it's almost like 100 megawatts difference, right, in this case. And if it weren't for the fact that you're off by one hundredth of a hertz, right, in this case, it's like 5 megawatts. It was really consistent. So you look at the bias once again. It's 50 megawatts for a tenth of a hertz. So, you, so if you reduce if you reduce that order of magnitude by, by by 10, you're looking at for, it'll be five megawatts for one hundredth of a hertz, which really adds up when you think about it, right? Because of the fact that you're looking at 95 megawatts in this case. So again, all these things, especially the AC equation has all these dynamic relationships that really is, is balancing one thing out with the other. And ideally if the bias is set right um, for a disturbance happening outside your system, right? You really should, you should have no effect on your race, right? Uh, you may end up, you know, pushing pushing power out. You may end up feeling the low frequency, but that itself balances out if you're given the right bias. 
Okay, Ash, thank you. Let's go to the next one. Here we go. For another, it's another example that falls along with that, right? So, so here you're doing a perfect job of maintaining a load resource balance and frequency is 60 hertz. You're doing a great job, right? 60 hertz is right where it needs to be. You're balancing generation and load. And then all of a sudden, a large generator in another balancing area trips offline and frequency drops to 59.9. So it's a, a whole tenth of a hertz, right? So if your bias is 50 megawatts for every tenth of a hertz, right, your A should be, in this case, is zero. Because in reality, right, you're not doing anything at this point yet. It's happening outside your system. So you're perfectly balanced, right? And notice that this thing dropped by one tenth of a hertz. So in this case, it's really easy to calculate. There's no need to calculate because really the, there's no net interchange difference. We have no from the schedule interchange. In fact, they don't even give you the interchange scheduling numbers. So here, all you're doing is reacting right to that sudden change in frequency by your frequency bias, which of course a lot of it is governor action. And that's what's really happening in this particular example. So here you're only looking at 50, you know, 50 hertz uh, of, of, of uh, help and you're, and you're responding with that directly with your 50 hertz of frequency bias, which works out well in this case. All right. So um, let me see what we're looking at here. The next one here. So in this case, right, it's, it's, it's and it also, this frequency bias would set perfectly. And the way you say frequency bias is that they run a lot of studies over a year. Most balancing authorities do that by uh, looking at looking how, at and measuring how a system responds to different disturbances, or even how it responds to noise. And over time, they have a calculation. Right? For, so usually, for example, for a 20,000 megawatt system, frequency bias can be anywhere between 200 to 250. Again, that all depends on the type of generators they have, whether it's if it's they have a lot of renewables, you may not have that 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 much of a bias because those units don't change so much, unless they have controllable uh, inverter-based resources. If they have a lot of of uh, combustion turbines that respond a lot quicker, then they may have the ability to do that. And don't forget also the 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 fact that there's a lot of governor action involved, right? Usually they have that governor droop that will arrest a decay in frequency, so that also plays into into this particular dynamic. Okay, Ash, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Maybe question five, right? I think we have here. So balancing area Z. Balancing area Z system operator knows that the interconnection frequency is 59.94. So that's that's slow. It's a 0.06 uh, slower than it needs to be. The system operator in balancing area Z also sees her A's is zero, right? So which of the following could be the cause of these readings, right? So one of the things they're saying is a net over generation in balancing area Z to support frequency, right? And why is this happening, right? So if the frequency bias is set correctly, as I said, as I said earlier, you're basically you're overgenerating, but your A should basically show zero in this case, and 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 you're balancing your area perfectly. But remember, you're probably pushing power out, but you're also responding to that drop in frequency. So again, the AC equation is since your bias is set so well, your your planning engineers did a great job. Not, you know, the AC equation is, is working beautifully, and then you end up with an ACE of zero, even though you're supporting system frequency rate. Okay. All right, let's just go ahead and go to the next one, number six. Okay. Here's another one. All right, anyway, here we have the na the AC equation again, uh, and, it's and it's full splendor once again. We, we have an, when an interconnected balancing area operates with their AGC mode set to tie line bias, their ACE calculation will include which data? Okay, so tie line bias looks at both the net interchange, right, the interchange component, and it also looks at frequency component, right? So how does interchange get calculated on a balancing authority? Well, you got meters out there, tie line meters that are reading real time instantaneous flow on all these tie lines. So when you have tie line bias, they really mean tie line and frequency bias, right? Because you're looking at both tie lines and frequency. Uh, and that's how the uh, AC equation is calculated. Now, if you had, for example, free, a flat frequency, right? Well, then it will completely uh, ignore the interchange component because you'd have a problem with like uh, your ties or something like that, right? So then it will just be looking at frequency. Or, or for example, uh, it'd be looking at, say, for example, you're not interconnected, you're like an island. Say, for example, you blacked out, you're recovering from a blackout. You started generation in your system. You got your own system in load, but you haven't connected to anybody else in the interconnection. 
guess what? Or even in any neighbors, you're, you're out there by yourself. Well, uh, you are now just running flat frequency, which means you're going to try and maintain a schedule of 60 hertz. And that's really all it's going to look at. So if you're running, you see the FA minus FS, your schedule frequency might be 60. So if your frequency actual is 60, guess what? It's going to be zero. So you have an ace of zero and you'll be doing a perfect job. If all of a sudden your actual frequency is lower than your schedule frequency, right? Well, now you are going to have a different ace in this case, right? So you need to have to pick it up. So, so again, uh, if you only have ties, you're not looking at a frequency that call that flat ties. So you'll be looking at just as a scheduled tie numbers and not really reacting at auto frequency changes. That uh, those those conditions usually evolve when you have a problem with your frequency reading or you lost your frequency metering source. So it doesn't happen as often. Uh, usually, you for the most part, most systems you're going to be running on tie line bias that includes frequency, but they always call it tie line bias, right? Um, now, again, be very careful because you notice these questions will give you none of the above, which really can throw things off, right? This is it's confusing because, and what I like about this particular answer here is that it says both frequency and tie line data, which is a perfect answer. That they're not calling it tie line bias, they're just calling it what it really is, which is the ideal way to answer this, right? But just remember when, when they say tie line bias, it, it includes ties and frequency. Okay. All right. All right, let's go ahead and do the next one. Question number All right. So balancing authority A has 12 generators with a total capacity of 2,400 megawatts. Of course, they're gonna come in different sizes, right? This won't make it that easy. Five generators have a capacity of 100 megawatts each, four have a capacity of 250 megawatts each, and three are bigger, they have a capacity of 300 megawatts each. So one of the 250 megawatt generators trips offline. So in this case, how long does A, does the BA have ACER return to within limits? How long does BA have to return ACE to within limits? And here, it's straight out of the uh, the rules is 15 minutes, right? That's usually what they require. And that's part of the uh, NERC disturbance control, disturbance control standard, right? Um, 15 minutes where they gave you to recover from any, any, uh, any issue in this case. And there's also more than 80% of your largest unit. So your largest unit here will be 300 megawatts, right? So 250 is what percentage of 300? So, okay, let's, uh, let's calculate it really easy, right? So let's say 10% of 30, 300 is 30, so 20% is 60, so that would be 240 megawatts. So in this case, losing a 250 qualifies, right? So that's what they mean, really. Is, so whenever you lose uh, 80 or more of your, of your largest, what they mean, your most severe single contingency, which is, of course, in this case, a 300 megawatt unit, you lose that, all the way down to 80% of that, that counts as, as an event where the clock is ticking and you have to recover right within 15 minutes. So that's an example of that particular event. So the answer here is B. All right, go ahead and go to the next one. Okay. All right, uh, if the frequency bias setting B is, mm, is a more negative than the frequency response of a balancing authority and a frequency decline is caused by a sudden loss of generation, in an external balancing area, what will be the result? In this case, A will be slightly negative and AGC would increase generation. But let's talk about this some more in the next slide because a, a lot of test takers have a lot of challenges in understanding all this. Perfect. All right. So here we have, once again, the ACE equation. And this really is a discussion of the frequency response obligation, right? So in this case, right, we're looking at, again, the ACE is equal to the net interchange actual. That's where you're really at minus a net interchange schedule, that's where you should be, where you're supposed to be, right? It's a schedule interchange, minus all that frequency component side, which is a 10 minus the bias. And then here's what we, it was really important, right? It's the actual frequency minus the scheduled frequency. So in this case, you know, if you have, remember it's, it's, it's the schedule frequency is being subtracted from the actual. So that changes the whole assignment there as well, right? So, so once again, remember I talked earlier about the, the bias setting in this case. So here we have an example of a bias setting, which is always negative, by the way, because uh, it falls into that equation. So the bias setting, setting here is a minus 100 megawatts for every tenth of a hertz, right? Here we plug in, for example, 59.9 hertz in this particular example. 
Uh, and of course, the net energy schedule is zero. So they want you a zero schedule. You're not supposed to be buying or selling any power at on this particular moment, right? Usually it's scheduled every hour. So so the the idea is that uh, to maintain frequency bias as close as practical to or more negative than the balancing authority of frequency response, right? So uh, usually, right, if they say your frequency bias is 150, they'll set it like at maybe 155, 160, right? Just a little bit more, a little bit more negative in this case, just to give you a little bit more. The problem is you don't want to go too far because then you will overcorrect, right? So is it, there's there's limits to everything. Know your limits. So uh, let's look at the one they did a perfect job of setting the bias ex exactly to the actual frequency response, right? So in this case, ACE would be unchanged. Usually something happens. Um, let's say, for example, here, ACE, the net interchange actual, which is really, uh, it's 100 megawatts, like we saw in the previous problem, right? So it's sending out 100 megawatts. It's not supposed to be sending out, it's supposed to be sending zero megawatts. So that's already a positive error of 100. It's pushing power out. Uh, on the other side of the equation, it's looking at the bias, which is exactly 100 megawatts, right, for tens of a hertz. And it's actually dropped down by that same tenth of a hertz, right? So what's going to happen there? It's both sides of the equation balance out. You see that right there. It's 100 minus 0 minus 100 equals 0, right? So in this case, nothing is really happening. They, they, they did a really good job with a bias. But if you set it a little bit more negative in this case, right, it's... Uh, the actual frequency response, ACE is negative, the unit agency pulse up. So this will help the frequency, especially if you have a problem with frequency kind of slowing down. Right? Here's an example of that. So you're seeing this thing happen here where they said the frequency instead of 100, a negative 100, they set it at negative 120. So same set of parameters. What happens now is that now you're getting a slightly negative ACE. Slightly negative ACE is now going to pulse units up to then, of course, push more power out and support system frequency a little better, right? Now, not by a lot. So what happens if you go the other way, right? You don't set it negative negative enough, I guess, in a way. It's only negative 75 megawatts for every tenth of a hertz. If you throw that in there, now you're going to go the other way. It's like as you, you go on the other side of the tipping point. Now you're going to uh, not, you're going you're gonna to worsen the situation with frequency. So now having a positive ACE, as you see, see there in that third example, you're looking at, at the end of the day, it ends up being a positive 25 megawatts. Well, what happens to your generation when you have a positive ACE? It's going to try to pulse them down, which means they're going to back down on generation. So hopefully this becomes a little clearer in this case, right? Okay, let's look at one more problem, Ash, I think. And then we can probably call it a day in this case. Well, no, we'll do two more problems. All right. Okay. All right, so in this case, right, you have balancing authority B has scheduled interchange of 100 megawatts from BA alpha and 50 megawatts to BA Charlie, right? So basically, it's getting power through it from A to B, and it's getting power and it's sending power from B to C, right? So in this case, it's supposed to have 100 or 150, meaning that's going to have 50 staying in the system, and then it's got actual interchange. Really, it's only getting 115, and it's only sending with 45 so there's definitely a difference there so you do a little bit of math here for you're subtracting the 115 and the one and, and negative 45 to get negative 70 and then that's then the actual net interchange and then actually the the scheduled net interchange is really supposed to be a negative 50 right because it's getting 50 megawatts from a so in this case right if this goes on for a full hour right the interchange in this case the inadvertent will be the difference between the net actual interchange and the net scheduled interchange and that'll be negative 70 minus negative 50 which is positive 50 which would be a negative 20. so and that's what the answer comes from 20 negative 20 megawatt hours because don't forget it's gone over an hour okay let's look at the next question here and let's uh, go ahead and hop to let's go to the last one i think that we have on there let's go to the question the very last slide ash if you would please okay there we go. So this is the last question here um, that we'll cover for today. Here we're looking at an example. A transaction of 100 megawatts is scheduled out of your area at the top of the hour with a 10-minute ramp. So you're setting 100 megawatts. It's going to get ramped out over 10 minutes, right, which means it's 10 megawatts a minute, right? That's what you need. With the following generation available, what combination of generation would need to be used? Now, three things you have to look at here, right? So every generator here has 
enough capacity. So the total capacity is 100 megawatts each. So they're all, they're all the same, but with different ramp rates. One is a half load. One's at a little bit below half load at 40. The other one, the number three, is at 50. Again, half load. And the last one, the number four, is a little bit above half load, so at 60 megawatts. So in this case, you know, number one is at five megawatts a minute. So that one by by itself can't can't handle a 10 minute ramp. Uh, if you do them all, it's going to be basically uh, 11 megawatts a minute, so it's too much. So here, what they're trying to get you to understand is what generators are likely to actually move together and do it right. So in this case, it's going to be generators five. I mean, one, which is five, generators two, and generator four, which is uh, answer C, which is one, two, and four. So it's so it's five, three, eight, and then another two, ten. So ten megawatts a minute. So when you combine those three generators, they will be able to move that that um that transaction over now the other thing to consider as well is you got to remember right um do they have capacity to do this that's another challenge right so if, if generator one was at 80 megawatts they may not be able to pull that off so one thing is have the rate of the rate of change is adequate and also make sure they have enough room to go up in order to support that particular sale well, I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, went over a few problems. But then again, this is definitely a uh, to give you a taste of what these exams look like. And this is just uh, one section, the balancing section. You got a few other sections as well: transmission operations, PNC, interchange, reliability, emergency ops. So, uh, in the coming weeks, we'll coming months, we'll, we'll we'll cover a few more of these. But again, this by no means is is comprehensive. You I really encourage you to you know like, like take some training. To help you prepare for this properly because that exam is no joke it's it's challenging for a lot of people right so um again uh, if you have any questions go ahead and write down in the comments below um and also please visit the hsi site that we have posted on there regarding uh the the available resources for this particular training uh, that really encourage you to actually look into that because that can often make a difference between success or actually failing and having to wait 45 days to take the exam again that's another thing. And then, of course, now you're now you're out 800 plus another hundred dollars. Right. So, again, thank you for your time. Um, best of luck on the exam. Uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, once again, thank you and have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.